Greetings guys. Here's the result of my attempt to uh, make a WR90 waveguide interface to SMA, coaxial transition. And uh, well, uh, the attempt is a success. It took me a couple of hours to get this result, but I'll explain to you how I proceeded. First thing I did, if you recall, I had uh, a long piece uh, of um, waveguide with the other end that was you know, wasted in this process. I used a metal hacksaw and I cut beyond the line that I had made, which is ex exactly one inch and a quarter. The scratch here is uh, one and a quarter, but it's not important um, to be exactly one and a quarter. It had to be one and a half inch or less because of the cover of the dish. If you recall in the first video, I had to make this a maximum of one and a half inch. So I made it a little longer than an inch and a quarter, and that's okay. Uh, the distance that matters really is the distance from the center pin of the SME connector to the edge, to the bottom of that cavity, uh, which I will cover uh, with a piece of uh, copper later. I'll explain this to you later. Okay, so I cut that thing, and then, of course, it was not uh, a perfect cut. It was not at right angle either uh, from uh, the waveguide. So I filed off, slowly but surely, filed off the surface here, and use the caliper to measure the distance at one end and then at the other end and then in the center and that's how I managed to slowly but surely over maybe 15-20 minute time to file something that is good enough at least I'm pretty sure to the nearest couple of thousands of an inch it's good enough so that was the uh, the preparation process then it was time to um, install the uh, SMA uh, connector. So with W1GHZ's uh, information about the distance from the back here to the center pin, I marked uh, with a punch um, a dot and, um, and noticed that by doing so with a uh, spring punch uh, that I had bent a little bit uh, the, <laughs> the waveguide inward due to the spring force of the punch. So I had to correct that with a piece of wood, re-straightened it. I don't think it's really that critical because, as you know, waveguides, um, there's a range of sizes that will work uh, for a specific frequency. But anyhow, I straightened it as much as possible. It's not perfect, but you probably do not see the, uh, the difference. Once I had punched the thing, I drilled with a pilot hole, a smaller hole than the hole needed. Uh, unfortunately, the, the end result was not quite uh, on the bullseye. Uh, it was um, a bit off from uh, the marks I had made with uh, the caliper. So, uh, I um, used a very small uh, round file and enlarged the hole with the objective of making the center where it should be. So I filed and filed and filed over maybe half an hour and managed to bring the hole at the right size for the Teflon uh, that's inside and uh, centered with the two marks I had made uh, by scratching with uh, the, the caliper. So um, I then ins pushed it in and it worked fine. As far as dimensions, it was a bit of a friction fit and that, that's what I wanted really. Uh, I did um, initially cut that the probe so I could fit it all the way in because the probe was longer and it did not allow me to push the connector in completely. But I cut it slightly longer than needed according to uh, Paul Wade's paper. Um, and of course we will file off some material at the end. Uh, once we tune the thing, we try it on the dish. Um, okay, so the last step was soldering the connector on and it was not easy <laughs> as you can imagine this is heavy and it's brass so it's a very good heat sink so the first thing i did was to clean the surface with brasso that's a metal polish it's good for aluminum brass other metals it works fine 
Um, so I just polished the surface here so that the soldering process gets a good metal to metal uh, surface there. So uh, after doing this, um, I tried to solder straight with my soldering iron here, which is a C245. Uh, it's a JBC type. This is the biggest tip you can get. And it's a very powerful iron. And despite this, using a blade uh, tip, it did not work. It, it bit to the connector, but it did not bite onto the brass. And the reason, of course, is insufficient temperature. So I went to plan B and I preheated this part on a heating plate. This is a very convenient tool to have. The heating plate, I, put, I set it to 150 Celsius because the solder I used which is silver solder, it's tin and lead and 2% silver, it melts at 179 Celsius. So I said, okay, I don't want to go too high, so let's set it to 150 Celsius. And I, I, the other thing I didn't want was to melt whatever is, was used to uh, solder this waveguide to the, to the flange, because it is soldered at the four corners. Uh, so 150 seemed appropriate. And the difference of heat that's required to melt my solder while well, the soldering iron would supply it. So I put uh, the, uh, the thing on the plate and I use a piece of steel wire to clamp it against the surface on the edge of the plate, of course. This is the only way to make contact with the, the waveguide itself. And uh, let it heat up for 15 minutes and then uh, came in with the solder, uh, soldering iron and swept with some solder and right away saw that it sucked like very well on both sides gave a very good result it worked very well so now what's missing well it's missing the end uh, end cap for testing i will be using this copper tape this tape is 0.1 millimeter thick so that's 100 uh, micron if you like so the question is will skin effect the phenomenon that the radio waves go inside the material, not only flow to the surface, but the higher you go in frequency, the shallower it goes in. Will skin effect hurt us with this 100 micrometer, so 0.1 millimeter thick material at 10 gigahertz? The answer is no. The skin depth at 10 gigahertz on copper is 0.6 micrometer. So 0.6 micrometer, and this is 100 micrometer thick. So we have plenty of margin. We can use this tape, and then it's self-adhesive, right? It's adhesive. So stick it on, bend the corners, and do our testing. And if we don't press too hard, it should be flat enough and do, give us good results. So that will be the uh, attempt of our next video to mount it on the dish and try it out with real RF and see what happens. Until then, 7-3.